Ethan's team this year. Mm -hmm. And Ethan, what's your team? Um, Are you on immersion? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Immersion. All right. Well, that's yeah. good. How's, how's everybody feeling this morning? Good. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys get, uh, you get the day off of school already, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and when did the robotics interest start for you, Stella? Um, it started for me when I was at a event hosted by Starbase mm -hmm. and the DOD. And I saw this table, and I mean, there were kids having fun driving around robots. So I obviously walked up, and I'm like, hey, can I drive the robot? And my mom picked up a pamphlet, and I was signed up a couple days later. How about you, Ethan? Uh, well, one day I was at a 4-H meeting. It was like my first time. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody invited us down, and we sort of asked to, and we went down. And we saw this humongous table with so much Lego on yeah. it. It was crazy bunch of interactive tasks and challenges all that good stuff mm -hmm. right how old are you Ethan uh, I just turned 11 and Stella I'm 11 and a half 11 and a half um, what age do you stop giving the fraction like when does that when does that like I'm 61 and three quarters but I don't yeah. you know yeah. it, but when you're at when you're still as age, you do that you go I'm 11 and a half that's cool yeah Chuck how old are you not 11 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very nice. So what, what's the next competition for you guys? It is our, um, our next competition is. We have a scrimmage yeah. um, that we host. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. on the 2nd of uh, November, and it's down at the fairgrounds in mm -hmm. the exhibit hall. Um, so we have teams coming from around the state. It is. Pull, it's pull, a, pull that just right so it's right in front of your mouth there, Chuck. There you go. Okay. You can turn it anywhere. It's else. a preparation for the state championship, which is the 6th of December mm -hmm. down at Fairmont State. All right. And you say you have five teams now. I'm coaching five teams this year. Yeah. So how did this all start, and, and what kind of money is involved in pulling this off? So it all started a little more than 10 years ago. The club was started as a special interest 4-H club. Mm -hmm. So there was a handful of kids in it. And uh, – my son, Edward, uh, was a Lego guy, so he got involved in it, and I was the like pickup drop-off parent, eventually became a helper. And then we had an unexpected passing of the person who started the club. So one of the other gentlemen and I took it over and kept it going. Mm -hmm. uh, he left a year later, and now Susan and I have been doing it for the last 10 years. Right, and what's Edward doing now? Edward is doing drone tech at Blue Ridge right now. Mm -hmm. How old is Edward? Edward is going to be 22. Edward's 22? <laughs> He's going to be 22. How many years ago did you bring Edward in here for the first he time? He was single digits, I believe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, so That's amazing. I can't believe Edward is 22. All the good times, stuff that he was in here for, and the robotics stuff. Is he, he still funny as can be? It's a, from a parent's perspective, it's a little different from <laughs> yeah. the general public. But, yeah. He had the greatest yeah, sense guy. of humor, man. He used to crack me up. Yeah. Now, Chuck, how much of what uh, he did in 4-H uh, Lego robotics is translated into what he wants to do in his profession? Well, he actually, um, I mean, he's a singer. That's what he likes yeah. to do the most. But he's doing, he's a techie kind yeah. of kid, so mm -hmm. he likes the drone, um, the drone program. He wants to fly. He's doing an FAA certification so he can do flight plans yeah. and that kind of thing yeah. for his for his drones. Um, but with what we do with FIRST, that's the company that runs all of our competitions. Mm -hmm. um, it is not just build a robot, compete with the robot, and go home. There is uh, there's a judging session where you have to talk about how you designed, how you programmed. And then the younger kids are also tasked with it's called an innovation project. So they have to solve or come up with a new solution to a real world problem. And the theme changes year to year. This year, it's a, it's an ocean theme. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they can talk to you a little bit about their, their project ideas, but there's public speaking, project management, all kinds of things that don't necessarily just have to do yes. with robotics. Uh, but there's a lot of real life lessons they can learn and some things that they can have. All right, Ethan, let's start with you. What, uh, what's the story with the ocean? What are you going to do? What problem are you solving? Um, so our project idea is sort of there's this thing called the newt suit. Mm -hmm. There's an improvement to that's called the exosuit. It's pretty much a human, pretty much a space shoot okay. suit, but for underwater. And so we have, have been designing one and talking about it, and the problems that they face are – um, bad visibility, so mm -hmm. we're like improving that, like thermal vision, all that good stuff. You're 11. How do you know anything about this stuff? Um, we 
we just look it up, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> impressive stuff there, Bill. This is the kind of stuff that you used to do when you would go down into the ocean. Exactly right. The suit he's referring to was actually developed by a lady by the name of Sylvia Earle, who's one of the pioneers in uh, uh, ocean exploration. Yeah, you guys yeah. should ask Bill. He spent his whole career on the ocean. So. Did you know that? Yeah. No. Yeah, he was an admiral. Yeah. When he was in the Navy and then NOAA, the big weather yeah. people. So, uh, Stella, what do you know about all this stuff here? Do you, do you have as much knowledge of this suit as Ethan does? I have. I'm re we are working and researching a different project. What are you doing? We are coming up with an idea that we have a mask, and on top of that mask there's a camera. We're attached to that mask. There's mm -hmm. a camera. And you wear basically a band on your arm that when, let's say, I look at a fish or mm -hmm. something in a coral reef, working specifically with coral reefs, when I look at that fish, I take a photo of it. My software on my armband will be able to detect what fish that was, where I spotted it, the date about it, and some information about that. And we are wondering if we can try to um, involve some science with um, community doing this and local scuba divers doing this to help increase our knowledge about fish population. Oh, and I got a guy for you by the name of Steve Boykin. He's a scuba diver in the area. He might be able to help you out on this. I'm in, I'm in volunteering Steve on the radio, by the way, Steve. I, <laughs> Judy, I think I saw Judy, his Judy wife, was listening morning, yes. a little bit ago. Judy, we need to get on this, get Steve involved here. They've got uh, scuba diving expertise. All right, so then what happens? Um, hopefully we will have people, and specifically scientists, will be able to look at this information and look at the population data. Another thing we hope our device will be able to do is it will look at coral and determine the health of the coral. And again, it's looking at the area, and scientists will look at this data and be and like, something's wrong here, or this area is great, and be able to really determine and learn more about our world. How are your grades in school, Stella? Um, hopefully very good. <laughs> I would think. Ethan, how about you? Yeah, yeah, no big deal, right? <laughs> they, Chuck, they seem very intelligent for 11. They they lap me every day. <laughs> I'd like to see your birth certificate. I don't believe either one of you. I think you're both mini humans. You've got a very small Adults. representation yeah. of what we have. We've got probably 30 kids now. Are they um, all this intelligent? This is pretty impressive. Pretty right. Yeah. That's incredible. Chuck, the question that Rob asked earlier is the sponsorship. Uh, what you're doing requires monies. Who's it, your sponsor? It requires yeah. money. And as far as the, the kids are concerned, uh, joining 4-H and joining our club is completely free. There's no charge. There's no charge to be on the competition team other than maybe a little bit of travel when we go to, um, to events. Um, so our, our scrimmage on the 2nd of November is being sponsored by Berkeley County Martinsburg uh, I wrote it down. Oh, convention and visitors oh, sure. okay. are, are sponsoring that event for us. This is their second year mm -hmm. of doing that. But we also have um, JLG out of Maryland. It's a lift company. Mm -hmm. um, my parents are sponsors, and we have Fogel uh, Accounting Services this year is also a sponsor. But we everything is donation. Everything is sponsorship. So um, Susan is very good at securing yeah. Funds. On an annual basis, what is your approximate budget? Between ten and fifteen thousand. Ten to fifteen. Which is not huge. So it's you know. for four H it's huge. It, it, but it's um, it's a bit uh, it, it in terms of being able to fundraise, we should be able to help out with that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, how many fundraisers a year do you do? We uh we don't actually do fun we used no? to do some bake sales and those kind of things, but now it's all uh, we have a sponsorship packet that we send out to local businesses. And people that we think that might be interested. And uh, it tells us what the club is and what we do. Well, you're making the best of the of the funds that you're getting, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, so the robots cost between 500 and and 1000 each for the younger kids. And then we also do the first tech challenge, which is the larger metal robots that are not supposed to run into each other. They are not. Battle bots. They're not battle bots. They are not. Battle bots are fun. They are, they are fun, but that is not our area. But uh, then the older kids, and that's... That's a pretty expensive endeavor. Do you guys ever see battle bonds? Uh, you know, I, I love battle bonds. <laughs> is that not the coolest show ever? It is really cool. Do they still do new shows of that? Do you know? Yeah. I haven't seen a new show in a while. My friend David at 4-H, uh, he has a battle bot and he went to a competition. Oh, he did? Yes. Yeah. We have one of our team members no that entered a uh, youth version of, yeah. of battle bots. And it's uh, not very large. Oh, that's pretty but cool. But no flamethrowers, no... 
Not yet. Circular saws. No, not yet. Not yet. What is the age range of your kids, Chuck? So we start them at, they can join the club at eight. Mm -hmm. They can join competition teams at nine. And they can continue until they're 21. 21. Yeah. Okay. Nathan, what do you hope to do in your young life here? What do you, what do you want to do when you grow up uh, and be an adult? I have nothing to do with this. I just want to be an actor. You want to be an actor? Well, that's cool. Like right. a designer, maybe. How about you, Stella? Um, I really would love to be a scientist when I grow up. Yeah. I would like to study the environment, mm -hmm. specifically um, animals, yeah. and mammals, really. Um, I want to study ways that we can improve our environment. Okay, well, that's nice. That would be uh, quite an undertaking. There's a lot of environment out there. There is. Yeah. Do you, do you think you might like to study what's above land or what's below sea? Probably what's above land, although um, I have family that studied what was below sea. So mm -hmm. I really just find interest in environment and in the world around us. Okay. So really all of it. All of it? And Ethan, and have you done much acting? Have you been in a, any plays yet? Well, a play's coming up, and I may be in it. All right. What, where at? Your school or down at the Apollo or what? What are you talking about? Um, I forgot where it was. But okay. It's kind of close by. All the stuff that you remember, but you don't remember the, where the play's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but he sure knows stuff about science, I'll tell you he that. He does that. All right. So uh, Bill spent how many years on the oceans, Bill? About 35. About 35 years on the ocean. Stella, do you have any questions for Bill about sailing the world's oceans? Because he's seen them all. They have to be gentle, easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever, like, like feel like it's it was like you were on the ocean for years, but you never got used to, like, being out there? Like, uh, I feel it would be hard to get used to living like yeah. that. It's always changing, and uh, uh, I spent a lot of my time above the ocean, but I spent quite a bit of time on the ocean floor down to twelve or 13,000 feet diving in, in submersibles. That's a different world altogether. Really? Yeah. I bet. They say, Bill, at certain depths there are fish that light up, have their own electricity inside them. Have you there seen this? There are. Uh, on the ocean floor, though, uh, uh, deep ocean floor, you see very, very, very few fish, uh, maybe a few rat tails. Uh, but in the intermediate zone, you do find some uh, luminescent fish. The interesting thing, though, is when you're diving in, um, uh, with submersible, there is what they call the photic zone, the first uh, 1,000 feet. That's where all the fish live. And including the large fish, the swordfish, the tuna, and the like. So a lit submersible would attract these fish. So you go through this photic zone totally dark because you do not want to attract anything. And uh, it's also save, uh, save a battery as well. But you only wait till you get below this photic zone do you energize your lights. And uh, uh, Ethan, do you like sharks? Mm -hmm. All right. So you, got, you have a shark question for Mr. Bill? I'll ask it for you if you don't mind. Okay. What are the coolest sharks you saw in the ocean? Bill? What is what? The, some of the cooler sharks that you the, saw. The, in the hammerhead uh, has the most unique uh, uh, shape of its head than any of them. I, the most fearsome is a great white. Mm -hmm. Did you come up across a few of those? We had one incident that was, yes, uh, very. Uh, uh, a couple of people were attacked. And one person lost a leg, and we were oh, lucky right. to uh, keep him alive. Uh, that's quite a story in its own right. I thought I told you in the past. Uh, but anyway, uh, we did keep him alive. Uh, it was an unusual event for a great white to attack out of nowhere, but this did happen. Well, there you go, Ethan. That was quite the experience, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Makes you kind of want to stay out of the water, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Don't go in the water. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Chuck, what's next for these young people here? What, what do they do when they get past this step in the robotics club? What's the next level? Once they get past the Lego stage, they can move on to the first tech challenge, which is the high school level robotics. And that there is, it's not Lego based at all. It is I can go to Lowe's and buy parts mm -hmm. and uh, that's they build from scratch. Yeah. Um, the only thing that is the control systems are the same for every team. But as far as the design, there's just size specs and not much else. And then at what age do you age out of the 4-H Robotics Club here? The, as far as competition teams, it is your 18th birthday year. Uh, but as far as the club, uh, it's we go till 21. So 21. Does yeah. many of the kids stay in it until they're 21, or is it we difficult have, to keep track? Most kids stay in it till they're 21. Once they get in, they, they stick with it. 
Right. And, and the competitions that these kids I- engage in, it's mostly task-oriented stuff, having the robot do something without bumping into something or, or in a certain period of time, correct? Correct. They have These guys have two minutes and 30 seconds and an eight by four by eight board with small um, Lego built elements on it that their robot has to interact with and do certain things. Mm -hmm. And that changes year to year. So in August we will get our parts and get the rules and they start building and programming in August. Um, Our state championship is the 6th of December in Fairmont and all the teams have already been invited. So we will be attending that. And the 2nd of November is our scrimmage and it's down at the youth fair grounds in the exhibit hall down there we have close to 10 this year teams that are coming to participate it preps them for the actual event a lot of these kids like eighth and this will be his first experience um, in competition so it gives you the etiquette and the rules of what you need to know um, this is Stella's second year she was at our scrimmage last year I believe as well mm-hmm. Chuck, you have to be on top of your game to uh, to keep advising and encouraging the kids. What is your professional background or your interest that gives you that? Absolutely nothing in robotics. <laughs> uh, Edward was interested in Legos, yeah. and that's how we worked our way sure. into it. Um, I'm with Berkeley County Schools in the autism yeah. program, mm-hmm. so that's I work in special ed all day. Okay. And I get home for about an hour, and then I head to robotics until late. And you you don't have kids in this anymore. So. I don't have kids in this anymore. No, Susan so. points that out to me yeah, why very you, regularly. Why do you keep doing it, Chuck? I, I love watching these guys and working with them. So um, the 4-H motto is to make the best better, and that's what we're we're trying to do. Sports are great. Sports are wonderful. Sure. But for some people, that's not their thing. Mm-hmm. So they get the same teamwork. I mean, these kids have never been on teams, so they learn how to work in a team environment and problem solve and – Watching the little light bulb moment when they figure something out, it's its pretty cool. Well, excellent. Uh, Ethan, what are you looking forward to in the upcoming scrimmage? Um, I just want to see how everything works. Yeah. Uh, that would be cool seeing how the other teams do stuff. And Stella, you've already been through this stuff once. What's it like coming back a second time? its I'm sure it's going to be very interesting. Um, this year, um, last year I was new and I had no idea what to expect. I think it might be a little easier knowing what to expect, but will probably be similar um i mean you have your table and then you have everybody else around you Mm -hmm. and you go look at other people's tables and it's really interesting to see what people do and what people come up with yeah they encourage that in in first it's they call it cooperation so it is a competition but it is mostly a learning and knowledge increase for these kids you pick up a lot of knowledge looking at other people's tables i do i learned a lot last year with all of our with the other tables and doing our um, project. And what would you say to kids out there who might have an interest in doing the kind of things that you're doing but haven't joined the club yet? I would say an easy way to start is by really just kind of thinking outside the box, thinking of new solutions, just thinking in a way that makes you really use your mind. Like, I learned a lot about how to – so I – I can sometimes be a bit bossy, <laughs> but Bill too. What is what is the way you guys can get along? Um, so I really learned how to work with a group of people, like without being like really like manage trying to manage and mm-hmm. do everything else. So all the other people on my team this year have never done this before, um, and it will be a lot of fun to try to work with everyone and to have that experience because it's a really amazing experience when you go to the competition. And you learn about They everything. are award-winning from last year. Stella's team won. We won the Rising Star Award. Oh, cool. Congratulations. Fist bump. <laughs> Ethan, this will be number one for you. And uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to it and you'll have a good time. And I hope you'll come back and talk to us and tell us how you did. Mm-hmm. All right. And, and, and good luck with that play, whatever it is and whenever it is. Have you ever had to memorize lines before? Uh, yeah. Okay. So he's kind of always been an actor, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to all of you folks. And Chuck, thanks for bringing them by. They're always very impressive. How, how can people help with donations if they'd like to do that? Uh, they can check us out on our Facebook page, Berkeley County 4-H STEM. Um, they can go to the Berkeley County Extension uh, website for information on how to join 4-H. And the 4-H, uh, Berkeley County 4-H is sponsoring a uh, trunk or treat down at the Youth Fairgrounds on the 26th 
from six to eight, and we last year had thousands of kids. So. That's awesome. Yeah. During the competition, are, is the public welcome? The public is welcome, especially at our scrimmage. If kids are interested, not sure if they want to join, uh, it is open to the public to come down and watch. It is a, it's a very kind sporting event. There is no contact. but <laughs> well, Hang out there a second. We'll be back with the final minute right after this.